G'day all, Ben here from East West. Uh, in this video, I'm going to take a look at silver. I'll try to make it a little bit shorter than my gold video. Uh, but we'll jump in and have a look at silver and see what we can see. So, an interesting chart, this one, just out here on the weekly. It's a little bit different to gold, in, in my opinion. Um, I mean, there's a couple of very obvious things that we've got to keep, it, uh, keep, it, keep in mind as we look at this chart. Uh, and the levels that it's at. So, obviously here, you know, we've got, you know, these two big tops right up here. Okay, very obviously, uh, and now we're approaching that same area again. Okay, uh, so you know, you you do have to keep that in mind. So let's let's just come in here and have a look at that. So, what are we talking about? Well, the the absolute top here is 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 just around that thirty dollar mark. This peak here is just under it so you know it, it goes without saying thirty dollars and psychologically of course you know that's that's going to be uh prove a pretty good area now the other thing i would look at here is just when we um take a look at this um you know the big retracement here lies you know round about in that same spot just kind of above that that thirty dollar mark so you know that i think it goes without saying that 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 area is going to cause some um some pretty stiff resist. Oh, it's gonna it's gonna attract a lot of attention, I'd suggest. So what I like to do is just sort of box that area off. So when we get in here and do some closer work, we we can keep that in mind that we we know we've got uh, some pretty big zones coming up uh, in the not too distant future. And just looking at this sort of bare bones, I mean, there's obviously uh, there's also some pretty obvious things going on here. Uh, so. You know, this, like I said, this this chart's a bit different from gold. It just sort of shapes up a little bit more. But this sort of, uh, even though we've got a little bit of an undercut through here, this this kind of trend's holding pretty well. Uh, I, I don't know if I'd call this as much a trend channel as much as it looks like as some sort of forming wedge. And this is on the bigger picture. And obviously, uh, within this, there's, there's a little bit more going on. But, you know, the other thing to do, of course, is just to grab the retracement off the absolute high there. And even though we sort of did dip through that 61.8% retracement level, uh, we've moved away from it. So, you know, and we had another test here at the 50, but this is less important now because this has come down broken. Uh, so, I mean, that's held. But like I said, it, you, you can't expect perfection out of these things. It's it's lovely when it does do it perfectly and it holds, but you know this time it's it's had a bit of an overthrow. So, I also wouldn't say that's disqualified. Uh, it's probably not as strong if you had have seen something just hold into that zone. So the one thing I can see here, uh, just up close, is you know you can see here where we've had all these sort of tops. So you know just here that kind of to me looks a little bit like a trading range there. Okay, where we've we've had this trend. Then we've sort of just gone flat. We've got a bit of a spring, even though that spring's probably in the wrong kind of position. You'd probably like to see it after the last peak before we break. But you can see that the market's gone kind of sideways. But I just found it kind of interesting that, it, that if you'd sort of take this, this spring out of it, um, you know, this range that the 100% line just sort of lines up with the top where, we, where we're sort of running into now. Um, I don't know if I'd lean into this super hard, but it's just... What I like to do is, is pick the obvious points like we did as we box this off and then see if there's anything else that's sort of got a bit of confluence that, that sort of overlaps uh, and comes into play, um, you know, up closer with these levels. Now, we did get um, the nice retracement off this pivot. So, you know, we would drag this up here. So just looking at this, if this was going to be the ideal scenario for me, I mean, I would I would probably like to see this if it, if it just got a little bit higher here, just just sort of into this sort of thirty dollar area. What you want to see if you were if if you were bullish or you were long uh, or looking for an entry is you'd like to see I would suggest something like that. Okay, coming back into the retracement to test the top of this, that would be the ideal looking scenario for this rally to continue. That that that's what I think because I just think at the moment, I mean, this is a weekly. This is a very hot run, okay? And we might be experiencing more like we um, sort of seeing with gold. Um, I mean, there could be a, maybe we get a, if this was the top, you might get that bigger retracement and then, you know, you might actually see it back 
towards to test all this into into its retracement zone, which wouldn't be pervy. It came back and sort of broke that, but it's not no not an overriding disaster. That would be good, uh, but I, I think you you can't expect that to happen. It's not going to um well actually that would be perfect, but I don't uh, I don't think you can be um that hopeful that the market's going to give you something that exact. It could, but I wouldn't I wouldn't have thought so. So just on the big picture. I think we are running pretty hot here, which is you know, obvious to say, and we do have some pretty good overhead coming in here. So it'd be more about just, we'll go in and have a look at this closely, but that would be the, the biggest style plan for me. Just waiting to see wherever this top comes in. If you're aggressive, you could come off this pivot, I think, in terms of looking for an area to, to get long. Uh, but um, also you've got the bigger pivot that you, you can consider if you want to give it a little bit of room because even coming back down here to the 61.8 that that is going to tie in pretty nicely Let me just remove this it's going to tie in pretty nicely to all these bottoms that we that we had here to test support so that would be you know, taking the spring out of um, out of consideration that would be also a, a pretty good tactical area not, not a guarantee and it's a long way back right that's that'd be a fairly big fall but you know, tactically, that would be how you'd set it up. So just jumping in here to the daily, the RSI, just because an RSI gets into what was traditionally considered over overbought, uh, doesn't mean the market is in imminent danger of crashing. It just means that we're, we're hot, right? We're, we're sort of at maximum momentum. And I think you can even see, um, you know, you can even just see, you know, the way the markets move through here, when you look at these candles, they're, they're reasonably uninterrupted until we've got up to the top here. Okay, and here we're just starting to we're starting to bog down. Okay, there's just starting to be a few tops, a few wicks, and the market's just struggling a little bit to go on with it. Now I'm just going to for some reason this doesn't work so well on trading view. So I'm just going to flip over to the futures real quick because I've just I've got some concerns about um, this bar, this this candle. It just does look like a climax. Okay, you've just got that big rejection wick on big volume off the top, and the market since then it looks like that this trend is now terminated. Now the other thing to keep an eye on, and it's the same in the futures as it was on the other chart, but we've got these. We're on a daily, but we've got these free bars now printing outside the Keltner, which is always a big warning sign. You can see it happened here. We started getting these free bars outside the Keltner before we got the big correction. So I'm not saying the big correction's imminent, but this does look like it. The, the, the trend, okay, the trend that we have been enjoying, um, pardon me, not from there, but <laughs> from here, that looks like it's ready to terminate into a trading range to me. And I think that's that's very, very apparent when you look at this on an hourly, okay? So, you, you, you know, look, Here's a tip. The, the, it's kind of difficult to, tra uh, to 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 apply a trend to this because there's there's a few like the pivots don't line up super well. You know, may, maybe you could use that one. But what I would just do is I would just put a regression channel on this because it's kind of like, I mean, you can see that's that's looks like a peak, but it'll just give us that the trend lines at best fit. So I think that what's happened is th this trend that we've been in. It looks like a pretty good case that this is you know, the terminal climax. And what have we done since? I mean, it's 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 pretty obvious to the naked eye that we're just stuck going sideways. And when you, you know, apply the retracement to it, well, we just, we just wick through the 61.8 here, but we're, we're, we're holding, right? So, you know, what, what would be the classic things that you, you would be looking for if this was going to be uh, a range that failed and, and terminated the trend and went the other way? Well, ideally, you'd be looking for the, the up thrust, okay? the failed breakout, the, the failed attempt to break away from this range. So we don't have that, of course. And we may not get it, okay? But that would be, in an ideal world, that would be what you'd be looking for, okay? This with a move down and starting to break away from that range. And at that stage, you're probably coming back here going, oh, okay, well, this looks like it's breaking down. Um, you know, maybe we start thinking about you know, some of these bigger moves coming back down towards the 50 or the 61.8. You can see there's a bit of action around here. We could possibly uh, provide support, but of course it could go the other way. You could get more of the classic uh, spring style situation where we just have an, an attempted breakdown that gets rejected very quickly. And then we start to very quickly 
hopefully with a good retracement sort of in there, we start to quickly trend away and, and we can look towards $30. So that's what I'd be looking for this week. I'd just be watching um, t to see which way this range is going to break. And then it's not a question of necessarily jumping on the break. But like I said, if this breaks, you might want to see if this breaks down and comes back and retraces, that would be the point where you might have a go. Uh, if, if you were if you were going to be a seller, and then of course if you were going to be a um, a buyer, sorry. So you know, ideally you would you'd want to see that that to be a seller, and then try to sell that that retracement there. And if you wanted to be a buyer, you'd just be looking for something the other way. I'd suggest, which would be an attempted breakdown that failed, and then a trend that sort of started to get outside that, and any sort of retracement back to test that would be your point of call. So that's kind of where I'm sitting in silver, right? We're just sort of sitting sideways and watching. Uh, but there, they'd be, the, they'd be the points I'd be looking at. So I'll leave it there. Um, thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. See you in the next video. Bye for now.